Thank you very much for joining us in this Conrad show where we talk about purpose, passion, and power. On this show, we look at young people who are trying to find their feet and they are doing things that are you know, extraordinary and also we can use those as touch points to inspire other young people. We believe so much that everybody has a purpose to live on earth and you need to find out what that purpose is and also you need to live it out until the, the day that you really discover that this is my purpose in life, you haven't really started living. And so we want to know what exactly our purpose is uh, through the lives of individuals. And then also there's, there is passion. When you find out your purpose, you need to live it out passionately. And there is power that God has given everybody to be able to use to lead that kind of life that would demonstrate their purpose on earth. And so that's what we are talking about on the Conrad Show. My name is Conrad Kakraba. We are sponsored by Heritage Christian University College. It's a university in Amasaman, right here in Accra. And the university offers master's degree programs, uh, undergraduate programs, and then certificates and short courses. We also have a media training center that can also equip you with skills in multimedia and then also in journalism. You can contact us on 02067. 3038.2. You can go to our website, www.hcuc.edu.ga. Just Google Heritage Christian University College and we'll be right there uh, to engage with you. This show is also in association with the Conrado Group. We are a group that is so much focused on developing individuals, personal development, and then also offering you services in education like language education. If you want to take the IELTS exam to travel to the UK or somewhere, you know, uh, in the world, you can contact us for us to help you. We also offer other services. You can reach us on 0607 Let's take a quick break. We'll be back to have our guest. Hope for the community, hope for Ghana, our beloved country, hope for Africa, and hope for the world. With four years of training through seating for lectures and getting the grades, you will develop competence and big hearts to save lives. Our BSc nursing program is uniquely designed with conviction, character, compassion, creativity, and community, with a keen focus on information technology and entrepreneurship to equip you bring hope to clients. We are Heritage Christian College. Our nursing program is accredited by Ghana Tertiary Education Commission and Nursing and Midwifery Council of Ghana. We are recruiting now. Heritage Christian College, a university educating compassionate entrepreneurial leaders. Do you have an interest and passion for the media? You see yourself excelling in the field of journalism and multimedia, but do not have enough time and funds to pursue courses in those fields. That is why the Heritage Christian College Media Training School was set up to give you an opportunity to train yourself for four months and get a two-month opportunity for attachment at Truth TV. With our state-of-the-art studio and newsroom, experienced, friendly lecturers in the field of journalism and conducive lecture halls, we offer students the chance to learn on the job with both practical and theoretical lessons. We offer courses in journalism such as newscasting, show hosting, voice training and phonetics, voiceovers, report filing and many others. In the field of multimedia, we offer courses in cinematography, video editing, animations, studio management, master control room management, light and sound engineering, set design, graphic design, photography, and social media management. We offer intensive one-week courses in communication essentials for professionals. We have both weekday and weekend courses. We are located behind Amasaman Stadium in Accra. Heritage Christian College Media Training School gives you all the tips you need to succeed in the world of communication.
So thank you very much for joining us again. This is the Conrado Show, and today we have a young person, a very young guy who who has been doing some phenomenal things, you know, around. And so we want to have a conversation with him. He has been my, you know, my school son at the university, and <laughs> I'm excited to see him growing, you know, steadily because of. Uh, understanding this concept that we just spoke about, purpose, passion, and then power. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Bright Ofori. Onward, Kakao. Yeah. Do you have any middle name? No. Just Bright Ofori. Very, very simple and detailed. Yeah, like my height. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but your height is deceptive. You know, somebody will look down on you and estimate your potential just because you are, you are, you, you know, kind of. Okay, I don't want to demolish. I'm put out. I'm put out. Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, but you know, yeah, yeah. I'm very excited. So tell me a little bit about Bride of Fury. Who is Bride? The Bride of Fury professional is a marketing and business development person. Okay. Who has also grown or have interest in diplomacy and international relations. Wow. For the marketing side, I now have the six years. More than half a decade of corporate experience working for renowned brands in Ghana, then consulting for brands out, out of Ghana. When it comes to the international relations side, it's just a passion. And a passion drove into me becoming a youth advocate and then engaging with multilateral organizations mm-hmm. out of the continent. So there's something small about Vital for you. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. And, and tell me about your growing up. Where did you grow up? And how did you grow up? <laughs> a young boy, I grew up in Accra, Taifa, mm. with both parents okay. being a, being Christians. Right. So by virtue of that, I you have to by force by fire. I also <laughs> I also became a, a Christian <laughs> from a humble home. I see. And then a member of the Lost Church. I see. So growing up, I had in, I was a, I was good in playing football. Mm. So I, I did I did a lot of football when I, I was see. when I was very young. Awesome. So I had to ditch the idea. So growing <laughs> up, it's been amazing being the only male child. Oh, you wow. are? Yeah, and then the How second. How many ladies? I have four ladies. Oh, okay. I'm the second kid, so. Wow, wow. But awesome. So growing up, I became like a role model to that other four ladies. Wow. So that's how my childhood of my yeah. really has been. I'm all excited. Over. We're excited. Where did you school? Senior high school? The university? Yeah. I attended Odan Senior High School. Odan. Okay. Yeah, in the Eastern region of Ghana. Yeah, yeah. And I went to University of Ghana okay. to do my first degree. Wow. And then later on, I the same university. What, what did you What did you do for first degree? I did business administration. Business administration, yeah, which I majored, means I majored in marketing. You know, let's start from the business administration. At that time, you know, if you are going to business and business school, you must have made six A's or aggregate seven, or if you're a guy and a lady, eight or nine. You know. What did you get? I was just good in school. Oh yeah, what did you get? I was I passed my exam. Oh, what did you get? <laughs> I passed my exam very well. How many how many years did you get? Well let's let's skip that. Oh. I did I did so well. I did I did well. <laughs> the school was all I had at the point I had to ditch my football and then focus on education. I see. So I had education as my only I see. talent, my only yeah, skill. Yeah, yeah. So I developed my best and then I see. I excelled in almost every every school I attended. I see. And so your first degree was in a business administration, focus on marketing. Marketing, yeah. And, and then an MBA. MBA is more boy. Well, only MBA. MBA wow. to marketing. Marketing. Yeah. Also at the University of Ghana. Yeah, the yeah. business school. And then, um, how old are you? <clears throat> this oh. wasn't part of anything, but oh I just want my audience to know. That. <laughs> <laughs> Those who still see us like yeah, 19 year olds. That's what today I'm 28. You're 28. Yeah. Awesome. 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 That's great. It's good to know. And um, so, why marketing? Why did you decide to focus on marketing? As a little boy growing up, my dad always got me closer to him. Okay. So, when he comes from work, he gives me money. What was he doing? He, what was, he, doing? he was into the construction space. I see. You know. Okay. Yeah, just contractors, yeah, yeah. building, and yeah, yeah. so he, he brings the money home. Yeah. I was the one in charge. Hey, so small boy. So I <laughs> like ended up being interested. 
have an interest in money. I see. Money, money. Yeah. So that's what even led me to go to business in I see. SHS. I see. And then that same business, interest in business, yeah. moved me on to go to the university. Yeah, yeah. Business administration. Yeah, yeah. But marketing in particular, because I felt I'm very innovative. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I have a I have Mm-hmm. For that sake yeah, of service. your mm-hmm. business ideas yeah, for people, yeah, yeah. or help our companies to achieve their goals. Wow, that's basically what marketing does. And it's the heart of businesses. And then I'm always want to, I also always want to be in the heart of everything. Uh-huh. So I choose to align myself with marketing. I see. Than the other programs. I see. I see. Now, what is the most significant thing that you have done or accomplished in your estimation? I think there are a number of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. I think the first one would be maybe the significant thing I've done is give myself to Christ. I think it's the most significant thing I've done <laughs> in my life. I feel, I feel, yeah, that's, that's good. It's yeah. the most significant thing. The rest are quite impressive. Yeah. At the age of, at the tender age, I, I had my first business. Mm-hmm. Then somewhere in 2017, I started my own business. Mm. And then that same year, what was it? In? It was global internship. What is that? So it's a an HR company okay. where we're we're looking forward to connecting people to the corporate institution, particular to students, yeah. so they gain a practical experience. Yeah, yeah. The most times education in Ghana has been centered on the classroom. Exactly. So I felt there's a need to bridge yeah. the gap between yeah. corporate Ghana and students. Right. So, mm-hmm. the, so that during their vacation, they don't just stay home idle. Right. They find something doing. So yeah. it went well, and then within a space of one year, we mm-hmm. were nominated by the Young Business Network, mm-hmm. Ministry of Business Development, National Youth Authority. Yeah. And then Germans, Conrad, Adena, Stiftung. Hey, you're mentioning my name. Yeah, a German, <laughs> a, yeah. a German political group. Yeah. I got a nomination for the Young Social Entrepreneur of the Year Award. Ooh. So within a, a just one year, I felt my work to be seen and acknowledged by yeah. this key institution yeah. in Ghana is something that I felt in love with. And then some of them would also be recently when I was invited by United Nations mm-hmm. Office of Drug, Drug and Crime to be at the Office of what? Drugs and, and, and Crime. crime. Yeah. Okay. To be the youth, the whole of Africa I was invited to be the youth speaker. Mm-hmm. That was a meeting between youth CSO and academia mm-hmm. to to brainstorm and then discuss issues related to corruption, I how see. non-state actors can be agents of corruption. I so see. I was where was that? What where was the the program? At the UN regional headquarters in Nairobi. Okay. Awesome. So I was I was there as a youth speaker, Ooh. represented the whole of African youth, made our made our voices heard, and then from there we put together some recommendations and activities which will be. Submitted to to the United Nations General Assembly wow. this particular December. Wow. So I thought this is one of the some of these are some of the most significant yeah. things I've done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm I'm very excited to know that. <laughs> and um, why are you so passionate about youth markets? First, because I'm also a youth. <laughs> yeah. Once once I'm a youth, I'm just passionate about things that concerns me and affect yeah. me. Yeah. By virtue of being a youth, I always want is to be done in my favor. Mm-hmm. I don't want things to happen without my influence or my involvement. So yeah. I was moved to be so much involved in it. So that at the end, I'll be able to fight for courses I believe in yeah. and the courses that would impact my life and yeah. my future. Yeah. So that's all led me to. Yeah. Yeah. Now, so let's talk about these two things a little bit more. Um, so let's talk about the, the Nairobi bit of it and then also youth in general. So let's start with the Nairobi bit. What what do you think was the key um, a highlight or point that you made uh, to amplify the voices of young people regarding all these issues you talked about? Okay, so this year in particular has been United Nations Coalition of Coalition Against Corruption. Yeah, it's the twentieth anniversary. So most activities of UN this year has been related to to corruption. Yeah. Before then, I was uh, I was in. In Strasbourg, mm-hmm. at the European Parliament, I received an invitation from Strasbourg, where here? In, in France, oh, okay. the European Parliament in Strasbourg. So yeah. I was there together with U- UN ODC's youth led mm-hmm. integrity advisory board members. Mm-hmm. So we did some 
youth related activities yeah. during the European youth events over the whole of youth from Europe. Uh-huh. I was just a co facilitator. Okay. We championed, we spoke about corruption, how it affects us yeah. globally. Yeah. So that same effort right after France. I flew to Nairobi and then we spoke to we spoke about just flying flying across the world. Wow. We spoke about Why don't you take me along some of those trips sometimes? They are more to come, so <laughs> very very <laughs> let's go. That's a political answer. Oh yeah. it's a diplomatic answer. It's a diplomatic answer. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, but but then let's look at the youth a little bit. What are the key things that you think that young people need to focus on or other people who are the political actors or all those decision makers need to do for young people? I think for young so people, away, yeah. young people, corruption affects us the most. Mm-hmm. Corruption isn't good for anyone, mm-hmm. but we stand to lose so much with corruption. Why that? With corruption, we are deprived of quality education. Yeah. With, with corruption, we have no job or lesser jobs. Yeah. With corruption, we have less access to opportunities. People in the villages don't have, even in Accra, there are a lot of people struggling. Mm-hmm. After school, people don't find themselves mm-hmm. working and all. So if corruption is dealt out with, it becomes a thing of the past. Yeah. There will be a lot of opportunities here for us. So as young people, we, we also need to get ourselves involved and then fight corruption. Corruption mm-hmm. is something that we all need to come on board and fight. Yeah. Also, I think corruption is, we are not so different from those involved in it. Mm-hmm. So, the elderly are doing it. In the next few years, we also might also be doing it. Yeah. Already we see young young people in the university, student leaders, some way, somehow getting themselves involved in corruption. So corruption affects us all. Yeah. That we all need to come together and then fight it. Mm. So that I believe is something very alarming. Yeah, we, we keep hearing news of people holding money, getting themselves in million dollar mm. cases that that in, that are around or involves corruption. Mm-hmm. So we are young people able to, to spearhead this fight against corruption and add our voices to global discourses. Mm-hmm. Corruption might not be zero, but at least be able to come to the barest minimum mm-hmm. that society will be a bit better than how we came to it. Yeah. Interesting. And um, so, but as young people, what do you think we ourselves need to be doing in order to mitigate the consequences of some of these things? One of the things we think I should we should be doing is social sanctioning. And this is what I mean. With social sanctioning, I mean now we live in a society where people who are perceived to be corrupt, people who have money, anyhow, yeah. people are just interested in making money. Yeah. They don't care how much how how they got the yeah. money. So because of that love for influence, mm-hmm. love for popularity, mm-hmm. people are getting mm-hmm. themselves involved in corruption mm-hmm. just because they want to show. Okay. People want to be rich not necessarily because they want to deal with poverty. Yeah. They want to be rich because they want to exert some form of influence. I see. So if as young people we are able to distance ourselves from people. Yeah. Someone has stolen money in society, we are all distancing ourselves yeah. from the oh, people I see. socially. I see what you mean. It will also reduce the yeah the love to even get money yeah, yeah, yeah. using any other means. Yeah. So I think it's one of the biggest things when we start adopting. I see. We we would we, we can reduce corruption to some level. I see, I see. Now, um, recently you were invited by the Office of the Special Prosecutor. <laughs> and why were, why were you invited by him? Why did you commit a big crime? Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> why you been investigated for anything? No, I don't have one million dollars in my house yet. <laughs> so I wasn't invited. I wasn't invited for... Because and I they made it easy. Really, yeah. But... But what I worked have done so far within the year mm-hmm. from the European Parliament, done some in, in African countries, Nairobi, yeah. EU and ODC, uh-huh. and engaged in some activities here in Ghana. He apparently he had noticed some of the works I was doing globally. Really? So he felt it would be a good opportunity for engage with to you. engage with I see. to hear some of the works I've, I've been doing. So he special prosecutor and in his office mm. he hosted me mm. for a discussion. Amazingly, the office is also working so much on putting together youth against corruption model. Wow. So I was invited to have a better understanding wow. of what is going on. Yeah. So that we I would also make inputs yeah. when yeah. when the report is, yeah. is being ready. So wow. It was also an opportunity for him to tell us, tell me in particular the kind of work they are doing and the plans they have for the young people. Awesome. So basically that was a discussion. Right, 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 right. I see. 
if I become Ghana's president one day, I should make you the special prosecutor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> or maybe I'll, I'll be somewhere else. <laughs> you will leave it. Maybe I'll be there. 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 You were. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, what other people have you met and what for? I mean, just one or two people for one particular reason that we need to know, basically. I met you. I <laughs> met <laughs> uh, you in, in my university days. Can you imagine? Through your grooming and coaching. So, you're one of the people. That's on a light on this. I've met head of states. <laughs> I've met people who are in power in, or in a position of influence. The late Rollins was someone I could visit quite a number of times. Let me see. He, well, how did you get close to him? Through youth advocacy. Okay, I see. He, I see. Youth advocacy and some of that is all it. But your you form of advocacy is not the, the noisy one, the one that we all. You know, yeah. That is, you know, diplomatic yeah. and just meeting people and all of that. So Takashi, silent influencer. The Takashi kind of <laughs> activism and advocacy is no more. Uh, we live in a, in a world where peace is, we all attain, we all want to mm, make the world more peaceful. Yeah. So any action that becomes more rowdy or yeah. becomes too aggressive, it might not really yield results. You okay. only get people ang- well, angry. Dead, yeah, yeah, so it's that. always got to mm. go in a softer approach. Mm. And we feel that there will be a lot of results than the fight. So Rollins has been one of the persons who, because I'm also a Pan African. I know, see, in, yeah. in my looks, you could see I'm always wearing. Oh, <laughs> what does it mean? And then be a pro African. So I go Use another in, term. Nkrumah uh, <laughs> just doesn't believe, just doesn't believe in Nkrumah's principle. But, but I believe in Africa. Is yeah, 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 yeah. It's more enc- encompassing. Yeah. Interesting, but do you think? Africa, I mean, young people in Africa, I mean, there are so many goals that have been set, you know, uh, for Africa to rise and, you know, all these decades for Africa and all these things. What do you think we need to be doing now as young people to be able to attain all these nice dreams, 2064, something, something, all those plans, you know? I think we need to go beyond talking and we need to let's start acting. Most of the meetings, people go, they travel all the world. Yeah. Having meetings, meeting. We see our leaders traveling. Yeah. The course meeting. Yeah. You, AU meeting at the end of the day. You have also been traveling. You have also started learning from them. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> you I don't. have just been flying, flying. You haven't come to tell us what we should do. Yeah. So <laughs> I think as young people, we need to start acting. We need to be okay. agents of change in, in everywhere we find ourselves. Wherever we find ourselves. You don't need to be at a national level. The little work that we do in yeah. our spaces, in our universities. Yeah in our churches, in our community, yeah. the act of kindness that we do for ourselves, yeah. the support, yeah. the assistance we give to ourselves, yeah. Yeah. collectively come together to make mm. the world a better place. Mm. So as young people, I think we need to be doing that more. Mm. And then if there are things happening that we don't like, we need to come up and then speak about them. Mm. In the past, young people, our voices were mm-hmm. relegated to the back. Yeah. We feel we are too young to lead here. Yeah. We are too young to even share certain ideas. Yeah. Your ideas are not counted. Yeah. But now we see young, younger people coming up, yeah. changing their narrative, mm. taking up leadership positions, yeah. leadership role, and then causing so much change. You see, you know, our brother Susu, yeah. the Susu as a young person, yeah. and, and getting into parliament, mm. bringing up certain Initiative. bills, yeah. bills in yeah. parliament, which yeah. the elderly folks were not doing. And these are some of the examples of yeah. how young people can get involved in mm. issues that affect us. Mm. Now let's shift focus finally to your your marketing and and business development consultancy and all of that. Um, what 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 do you see, especially for young people who start businesses? What do you think is lacking? I think the first thing, the yeah. hardest, the hardest thing is that our, our economy is lacking. Oh, okay, economy, that's where the problem yeah, starts. For Ghana, we have. A macro and a microeconomic factors that's very poor. Mm-hmm. We are not in a in good times. So we see a lot of young people starting business and collapsing. Mm-hmm. Even there's a good business that are collapsing much mm-hmm. more young. Mm-hmm. So one economic uh, uh, as a country Ghana. The structures. The structures, yeah. taxes, everything is collapsing. Mm-hmm. Exchange, mm-hmm. exchange mm-hmm. rates, C D depreciation, mm-hmm. inflation, all these things are 
affecting mm. business. Mm. It's not making any way. So you might have the best of ideas. You might have the best of products on the market. You might have the best of initiatives to solve mm. a, a problem in society. But at the end, it might not work so because of a lot mm. of times we, I always say we are working hard in the wrong country. Mm. Yeah, some of these work that you are in, you mm-hmm. find yourself doing in other part of the world, yeah. advanced countries, you'll be excellent. Exactly. You're not doing anything extraordinary than us. But because of some of these macro and then micro economic yeah. factors, be able to excel. Yeah. But nevertheless, we still need to push on. We don't need to give up. Sometimes you need to go when it hits. Just go back and give it a try. Yeah. I've been in that situation quite a number of times. I hit, <laughs> I go back, I hit, I go back. I At the end of the day, you don't really give up. And then we should ask young people, young people in business, who well, are especially those who are doing their own businesses, mm-hmm. don't be too, don't be moved with the love for the money. Yeah. Because the money might not come now. Mm-hmm. But when you keep persistent, mm-hmm. just, just have it that, you know, sometimes we see people driving their cars. Mm-hmm. I want to be this person in the yeah. next, in the yeah. next one year, next yeah. two years. But if we look beyond that and then also look at the service that we are rendering without giving ourselves so much hope. Yeah. Not fall in love with the money. With time, the money will come. Right. So we shouldn't give up. We should keep, keep pushing, keep persistent. Awesome. Awesome. It also comes someday. Yeah. Now, um, so, for example, uh, your business, the global intention here, yeah. do you still run it? No, no, no. Then, okay, you are focused on bigger things right now. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Focus on something. I see. So, what's your company called? The, your consultancy, uh, or, or do you run it as a company, or it's just you? You know, tell me a little bit about your consultancy. So I work. I work for a consultancy. Company. Okay. Professionally, okay. I'm attached to a company that I work for. I see. But as an individual, do you do you mind sharing the name? I can discuss. Okay. For so now. Yeah, it's all right. <clears throat> but as an individual, yeah. I I do some work on the side. Okay. When Borussia Dortmund came to Ghana, I had opportunity to shoot in stars to create content and then handle some of the marketing work for Borussia Dortmund. Borussia Dortmund is a the football club yeah. in Germany. Yeah. So they came to Ghana last year. And then I had the opportunity. What, of, what were they coming to do? They they came down here to Skull. to play football with a oh. with, with a legends African legends. I see. It's a world of fostering unity between the Germans okay. and then the African football awesome. community. Awesome. And that they also use that, that opportunity to network or support mm. young talent in Ghana, like mm. the shooting stars, mm. the football club in Ghana. Right. So they came down here and had the opportunity of. Providing some services for them to shooting startups. Yeah, I see. I see. Now, um, so let's talk about your your faith as well. <laughs> yeah. So you said that the most significant thing that you know has happened to me or, or to you, I mean, or accomplished is the fact that you became a Christian or you have given your life to Christ. Yeah. Now, so. Why is that so significant? Why is this that important to you? I think there's more to life than there's the world begins. I believe okay. there's life after death. Right. So where my my life will be afterwards, I I cherish I cherish it more than the current journey here on earth. It's very short. Okay. The Bible says by right, seventy, if you're lucky, you're you're ninety years. The life, but is that all the Christianity is worth? That's the afterlife. Yeah, the after, I think that salvation is the most important. The essence of Christianity, or our, 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 our living, or we getting involved in our Christian life, is because we want to be saved. Yeah, but yeah. of course, it should have an impact on how we live now. Well. Yes, yeah, so through, <laughs> through our living here, right, salvation right, is the right, word. Right. The Bible says, oh, my, I was seek <laughs> your party on salvation <laughs> with fear and trembling. So, yeah. meaning salvation yeah. doesn't come because yeah. of you. Yeah. You're yeah, a member of the Lord's yeah. Church, or you been baptized. Interesting. We need to work on it. Right now, so, um, but how do you balance uh, all the things that you do with with faith as a young man, uh, growing up with all challenges and you know opportunities and all of that, and you know how are you able to balance all these things and still maintain your identity as Christian? The foundation was good. Okay. Foundation did everything for me. Special thanks to my parents. Mm-hmm. I was involved in, from my childhood, I got 
fell in love with with the god or the christian yeah, elements yeah. so i couldn't depart from it i see so everywhere i find myself yeah. of that teachings and yeah. that morals that yeah. were instilled mm-hmm. in me i still mm-hmm. find myself right in it okay so i think it's more of my parents yeah. the work they did and then the teachings of the lost church i yeah. think it's also these are some of the good teachings that if you're able to get it right from the onset it, it stays with you forever awesome. except you don't want to <laughs> go by it but if you, yeah. if you live by it yeah. you'll be able to yeah. live with it yeah. throughout your life yeah what advice do you have for young people who want to get into your space you know all the stuff that we have spoken about <laughs> marketing business consulting and uh youth advocacy and you know all these you know meeting with all these people to push a certain kind of agenda to make the society better for the young people and all of that okay. i think for my, my fellow young people mm-hmm. identify what you what you want what you are passionate, passionate about certain things might work for me my wouldn't work yeah, for you yeah so identify what you're good at and then look at two things as as you mentioned I'm, I'm at the business side mm-hmm. and I'm also with the diplomacy and the yeah. advocacy. Mm-hmm. There's one that brings the income mm-hmm. and then the one that's just about the passion, yeah. which in the long run would, would bring some form of money or bring more opportunities yeah. to you. So look out for what will give you money, then look out for what you're passionate about. Yeah. Don't just fall in love with your passion. Mm-hmm. We live in a part of the world where passion doesn't pay bills. Mm-hmm. You can be passionate about a particular course, mm-hmm. particular activity, but it wouldn't give you money. Yeah. In the long run, sometimes we even end up, because you need have bills to pay, yeah. so you end up giving up on the, on yeah. the passion. So yeah. find a, a smaller source of income, an activity that gives you money, to then you follow your passion. Your passion. Mm-hmm. Else, if you follow passion, honestly, you mm-hmm. you within a year or six months <laughs> the passion would be the, the passion <laughs> I see. so that's that's the the most important advice i right. think i would share with young people I see. the source of income is is something that's needed yeah. so if you are someone who doesn't come from the world to do home financially yeah. Yeah. okay home get the support financially first mm-hmm. to work in yeah. and then you can also add other passionate activities like advocacy into it right 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 interesting any final words <laughs> Yeah, what does the future hold for my bride? <laughs> the future is my name. Ah, the future, <laughs> the future is my name. I love that. <laughs> I love that. It just occurred to me. I was like, ah, bride? Yeah, the, the future, future must be bride. Yeah, the future is me. I'm the future. I'm the future. The future yeah. is bride. I think yeah. currently in, in Ghana, mm-hmm. there are a lot of challenges that mm-hmm. we all can attest to. There are right. hardships. Right. Every, everyone is feeling it. Mm-hmm. The rich, the young, the mm-hmm. old, the poor. Mm-hmm. Everyone is feeling it. But don't give up. Keep pushing. Yeah. Giving up, you have no no option. You don't. Op, giving up is not part of the option. Mm. You don't need to give up. And I believe, as as a continent, Africa, Africa mm. is rising gradually. Mm-hmm. Though we've been in the ditch for long, we've been we've been left behind for long. No one left us behind. We ourselves also left mm. ourselves behind mm-hmm. for long. But now the awakening is coming. Yeah. The consciousness is coming. We've seen what's happening in the Francophone countries, yeah. Niger. Yeah. So Africa is rising gradually as I young see. people. We in the next few years will be taking over the mantle. Whoa. So let's let's Whoa. let's embrace We're ourselves. Looking forward to you. Let's embrace ourselves. <laughs> Coming on board. As young people, let's <laughs> let's not give up. Yeah. Giving up is not part of the option. Yeah. Let's not give up. Let's right. let's support ourselves. Let's hold our hands. Yeah. We can do it. Other people have done it. In the West, they are doing it. Mm. We too can do it. Mm-hmm. They are not so much special than us. Mm. When it comes to intelligence, we are up there. Mm-hmm. When it comes to strength. In sports, every every sphere of life, we see blacks excelling. Right. But that in that part of the world, we, we are not doing it so mm. much. So it's just a reminder that we can do it again. Let's 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 wake up. Mm. We are sleeping. Let's wake up. Interesting. Let's embrace ourselves, and then we'll get, we'll make things right. Some. Wow. How does somebody follow you to know more about the things you do? If they're interested to ask you a question or something, or to get involved in what you do and all of that, then do you mind? You know, sharing social media handles or yeah. So I'm available on LinkedIn. Okay. What is it? Um, Brighter yeah. if you search for Brighter for you, you okay. see on LinkedIn. Okay. I'm sure a little Brighter for Papa, but if you see the cutest person on, <laughs> on LinkedIn, just just click on the button. Can you imagine? I'm, I'm very active on LinkedIn. I see. On Twitter, I'm also active. Hey, I'm also here now. Uh, X, X, yeah, mm. X. 
X and X and Instagram. I see. I'm 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 not. So on. Facebook, yeah, you don't come there. No, that I one is for us. Eh? I don't <laughs> think Facebook works for you. So I am brighter for you. I am brighter for you. It's my. That's it. It's my. Hand. I am bright for you. Yeah. That's the, you yeah. know. I am brighter for you on on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. on on Twitter, on Instagram. Okay. Just search for me. You find awesome. Me. Awesome. Thank you very much for your time, Bright. Thank uh, you so, for, so, 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 thank to you host for having you. me. Thank it's you. been ages. I've been trying to host you, but you've just been running away, you know. But today, uh, the Lord has made the way for me to host Bright Fori. Um, he was my mentee, you know, at the University of Ghana, and I've learned a lot of things from him as well. Though I was rather supposed to be mentoring him. <laughs> yeah, but that's 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 a good, you know, mentor mentee relationship where we mutually learn from each other. And I'm very excited that he's opening up on different things that he's been doing. He is someone that I admire so, so much, and I would like young people to also learn uh, to be uh, the kind of person that he's grown up to be in terms of, you know, faith, using faith, you know, to <laughs> advance one's one's motivations and also aspirations in life, and then also finding that purpose and working so hard, you know, academically and then business-wise and, and all of that, networking, social networking and, and influencing, you know, thoughts, processes, and making sure that you link up with people who can help you to, to find your voice. And that's what we've been discussing, find young people finding their voices. It's very, very important. You too can find your voice if you decide that you want to embark on this journey of self-discovery and you know impacting society. This has been the Conrado Show where we talk about purpose, passion, and power. Uh, keep being with us, and we'll get in touch again next week. This show was brought to you in association with Heritage Christian University College in Amasaman, right here in Accra. And admissions are in progress. You can go to our website, Heritage Christian College, or www.hcuc.edu.gh. And also, uh, we are also supported by the Conrado Group, which is a personal development company. And we are very much uh, interested in relating with you to help you find yourself. You can reach us if you want to know more about all these on 020 67 my number, you know, that you can contact me uh, for any discussions on this. If you want to also partner with us on this show, you are invited. Thank you for your time. Bye for now.